Hello everyone and welcome. Today we will be talking about the physiology of fertilization. So this is the process of combining the male gamete or the sperm with the female gamete or the ovum, leading to the production of a zygote. So to understand fertilization we first have to be familiar with the different components of the sperm and the egg. So here on the right we have a human egg and we can see this weird structure around it. These are uh, granulosa cells that are expelled together with the egg during ovulation. And uh, this is called the corona radiata or the cumulus oophorus. And the uh, sperm will essentially have to digest through it to reach the egg. Here we also have the zona pellucida uh, drawn in white. And this is essentially a thick transparent membrane uh, that surrounds the egg. Now, as of the sperm, uh, we have quite a complicated diagram here. We don't need to know about all of these different structures. However, know that the sperm has a head, a mid-connecting piece, which is full of mitochondria, um, as the sperm needs a lot of energy to swim. And we have a tail that allows for its mobility. Now, here in the head, we have this important structure called the acrosome, which is shown here in orange and here as well. And uh, the acrosome will essentially contain a bunch of uh, different enzymes that will be important to digest through the zona pellucida, which we will see further on. So the sperm will travel around 116 to 200 millimeters to the site of fertilization at the ampulla. So the ampulla is a region of the fallopian tube shown here. That's where it starts and surrounds this whole area. So we have the fertilization site there, as it, it can be quite variable. So the egg is going to travel from the ovary to around here, the fertilization site, while the sperm needs to travel much longer. And so the sperm will uh, reach the fertilization site as a combination of its own motility, so its uh, tail, and uterine slash oviduct contractions. So the uterus and the fallopian tubes will contract to try and push sperm to the fertilization site. Now, in addition to that, we have what's called thermotaxis, which is the movement of sperm uh, influenced by a change in temperature. And also chemotaxis, which is the movement of sperm influenced by chemicals. In this case, it is a gradient of progesterone. So the egg here will be secreting progesterone, and so um, it will essentially lead the sperm to the egg uh, since the concentration of progesterone near the egg will be greater. So the first step of fertilization is the penetration of that cumulus oophorus or the corona radiata. So this involves the digestion of the extracellular matrix by the enzyme hyaluronidase PH20. So this enzyme, pH20, will degrade the hyaluronic acid, which is a, a major structural proteoglycan found in extracellular matrices. This process will be uh, achieved by hundreds of sperm. So as you can see, there are many trying to penetrate the corona radiata until finally they reach the zona pellucida. Now, once the sperm cell reaches the zona pellucida, it will bind to the zona protein 3, or CP3, uh, which will induce the acrosome reaction. So, the acrosome reaction is essentially the release of those enzymes contained in the acrosome in order to digest the zona pellucida. So, as you can see here, uh, showing the acrosome reaction, uh, first, when it first comes in, into contact with that jelly coat, this is the zona pellucida, um, it will bind to the ZP3 proteins and uh, expel the contents of the acrosome, which as we can see in this progression, it will digest through the zona pellucida. And as the zona pellucida is being digested, sperm then binds to another protein called the zona pellucida protein 2, or ZP2. And this will essentially allow the sperm to swim through to the egg make contact with the egg. Next we get the fusion of the sperm and egg cell membranes as we can see here in this part of the image and 
Essentially, this signaling cascade is going to lead to the release of calcium ions. So this is thought to occur through two secondary messengers. First, inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol. And essentially, they will cause the release of calcium from intracellular stores. And there will be a consequent exocytosis of the cortical granules. So the cortical granules, as we can see in this image, are these granules full of uh, proteins that surround there the cortical area of the egg, so the outermost area of the egg. And as you can see here, uh, its content is being uh, expelled out of the egg. So this is the cortical reaction. Um, so the enzymes of the cortical granules are released outside the egg and cause a modification in the ZP2 and ZP3. So the zona pellucida the protein 2 and the zona pellucida the protein 3. And since they are modified, then sperm cannot bind to these proteins. And hence, only one sperm can fertilize the egg. Because as we saw earlier, we need ZP2 and ZP3 to first induce the cortical reaction and second to allow the sperm to reach the egg. And so if sperm cannot interact with these proteins, uh, we don't get any more sperm uh, entering the egg. And this is very important because a uh, triploid cell is incompatible with life. And so we must uh, prevent that polyspermy. The next step is when the entire sperm enters the egg during fusion. So there will be the disintegration of the flagellum and all of those mitochondria in the sperm also disintegrate. So as we can see in this image, it's actually the sperm, mainly the nucleus of the sperm that enters. Now, once inside the egg, the sperm DNA starts to decondense and the membrane called the pronucleus forms around it. Now, during this same time, the egg undergoes the second meiotic division. So after that large increase in calcium ions, when the sperm first fuses with the egg, there are also smaller oscillations in, in calcium ions, and uh, this will cause the egg to wake up and resume meiosis, uh, beginning embryonic development. So remember that up to this point, the egg had not completed meiosis. And after it completes meiosis, um, a pronucleus also forms around the female chromosomes. Now, when the sperm enters uh, the egg, it will supply the centriole. That becomes the microtubule organizing center of the zygote. So this centriole pulls together the male and female pronuclei. And once these contact each other, the nuclear membranes break down the chromosomes align on the metaphase plate and the first cleavage occurs. So we can see this happening in this image. We have here uh, an egg that has completed meiosis. We can see this by the presence of two polar bodies. So the male pronucleus and the female pronucleus, they come together. Upon contact, that pronucleus uh, membrane breaks down and the chromosomes come together in the metaphase plane and we get the first cleavage. Here's an image under the microscope of these things happening. So we have a male and a female pronuclei coming together and here we have presence of one polar body and the other polar body. And notice that during all this time, uh, the, well, now the zygote is encapsulated by that zona pellucida. Now we have uh, some time for some questions. Uh, make sure to pause the video to think of your answers. What is the definition of fertilization? Where is the most common site of fertilization? Which enzyme degrades hyaluronic acid?
What protein induces the acrosome reaction? What is the function of the cortical reaction? Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more.